Sing to these babies. Sing to the babies? Yeah, just like he's at home. Coal miner's daughter. I hate rude behavior in a man. Won't tolerate it. Lonesome dog. Stop it, man! He's a U.S. He's a U.S. He's a U.S. The Fugitive. What do these three films have in common? Obviously, Tommy Lee Jones, a rising star who is the subject of this special edition of Siskel and Ebert, and from time to time, we like to devote an entire half hour to a major player in Hollywood, and the time has come to acknowledge Tommy Lee Jones, the smartest tough guy in the movies today. A lot of video rental ideas in this show, good films. I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. A long time ago, in 1976, I saw a movie named Jackson County Jail that was billed as an exploitation picture, but was a lot better than that, and one of the best things in it was a performance by an actor named Tommy Lee Jones that I never heard of. There was something instantly special about him, a strong screen presence, an ability to seem both dangerous and gentle, a feeling that there was a lot inside, but a lot being held back. Since then, I've seen Jones in a lot of movies and nearly always admired his work. For example, in JFK, for which he got an Oscar nomination. Regardless of what you may think of me, Mr. Garrison, I am a patriot, first and foremost. I've spent half my life in the United States military, serving and defending this great country, Mr. Shaw. And you're the first person I ever met who considered an act of patriotism to murder his own president. Now, just a minute, sir. You are way out of line. Jones was terrific in JFK, but he wasn't a box office name, and the general public didn't always know who he was until the back-to-back -back action hits Under Siege in the summer of 92 and The Fugitive in the summer of 1993. Here he is in Under Siege playing a megalomaniac who hijacks a U.S. Navy ship and plans to make a nuclear missile deal with North Korea. Here we have our tomahawks speeding their way to the sunny Aloha State. Turn around. As you can see, there will be no return. I got the key. The lock is broken. Step forward. Have a seat over there. You're going to watch the end of the world on television, my man. There's a texture to this performance, a sense of menace, and at the same time, a sense that he's enjoying himself, that his character doesn't mind looking a little silly and getting a few laughs, but that the punchline could be sudden and violent. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. And this little piggy... Oh, mama. Oh, mama. And here's Tommy Lee Jones in The Fugitive, playing a federal marshal on the trail of a doctor accused of killing his wife. Now, this is a tricky role because although the audience supports The Fugitive, played by Harrison Ford, the federal marshal is not the bad guy. He's just a smart, hard-boiled professional doing his job. What I want out of each and every one of you is a hard target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, or dog house in that area. Checkpoints go up at 15 miles. Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. Both The Fugitive and Under Siege were directed by Andrew Davis, and both of them were superior action thrillers, good enough to rate consideration among the best films of the year. And Tommy Lee Jones is one of the best things in them, taking roles that could have been stereotyped and making them into fascinating, intriguing characters. After more than 20 years of acting, Tommy Lee Jones was a star. And now you're hearing, I know, uh a lot of people that I talk to, and many of them women are saying, I really like him, I yeah. really uh, like him, and I'm trying to figure out, and what this show is about is, what is there so special mm -hmm. about him? And uh, one of the things is, and I, you know, you've heard me tell this story before, but in terms of acting, what makes the really big stars, uh, it was once told me, a joy of performing quality. It's yes. just what you said when you were talking um, ab about Jackson County Jail and, the yeah. other, and, and these other pictures. Uh -huh. 
he loves to have fun in the character. Yes. And why not? Why not as a police chief who's running, or a, um, he's a U.S. Marshal, he's running a, a little team. Why can't he be like a football coach? Yeah. Why can't he be a, a, a ringleader, a lion tamer? And why Shut can't he make fun of himself yes. while at the same time, for example, Tell when he sends story. out for coffee and donuts at yeah. a crucial moment, or another moment, when he, instead of, he, is a scene where another uh, actor with another style would have said, yeah. you know, oh my God, and he says, my, 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 what have we here? It was, it was just, it's just perfect the way he brings in those other notes. The other thing we're going to be talking about is his intelligence, and that's the other thing. We, we're calling him the smartest tough guy. He is smart. He went to Harvard, and he shows the smartness in his characters. Just because they're bad, that doesn't make them dummies. That's right. Okay, let's take a look back at the beginning of Tommy Lee Jones' film career. He played street smart characters right from the start, making his feature debut as Ryan O'Neill's roommate in Love Story from 1970. He was billed in the film as Tom Lee Jones. Hey, hey, Barrett got a new goodie? Yeah, Jenny Cavallari. Who? Yeah. It's a music type from Rhode Island somewhere. Yeah, I know the one. Uh, real tight ass. Yeah. Plays piano for the Box Society. And what does she play with Barrett? <laughs> Probably uh, hard to get. His first important movie role was, as Roger mentioned, in the thriller Jackson County Jail from 1976, which was more than just a redneck melodrama, thanks principally to Jones playing an inmate on the lam with Yvette Mimieu. Hey, you understand something? I'm a thief because I want to be a thief. I don't want to be nothing else. And there's nothing wrong with being a crook. Everybody's crooked. I never met a straight person in my whole life. His more lethal image took hold in his next major picture, the Vietnam vet drama Rolling Thunder, another small jewel, definitely worth running if you haven't seen it. Another villainous role was in Eyes of Laura Mars from 1978 with Tommy Lee Jones as a detective threatening fashion photographer Faye Dunaway. <laughs> does have the ability to be very scary on film. It's kind of amazing that Tommy Lee Jones rose out of the villain roles to become a sympathetic star. A lot of good actors don't make it beyond that. I hate to belabor a point, but it had to be two things that made us aware of him. He's smart, and somewhere along the line, it seems like he was hurt. And so his characters, as villainous as they always may be, always seem real. Roger, this is what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at this guy, you sense that somewhere there's some pain mm -hmm. somewhere, and it always explains and gives a humanity mm -hmm. to his bad guys. I don't know what the story is of his life. You know, Something must be there. It's interesting because a lot of movie villains just stand there saying, look how bad I am. Yes. And he often seems to stand there saying, look how bad I'm forced to be. Or I'm feeling, there, yes. Yes, there's, a, there's an undercurrent of, yes. of niceness. Of, you know, there's a quality that says, I'd like to be a better person than yes. I am in these villainous roles. And somewhere I'd like I've... to see him in a straightforward heroic role because I think he could probably bring a lot to that. I want to see him in romantic roles because I'm telling you, the women that I talk to love this guy. Uh -huh. He's not conventional movie star rugged handsome, uh -huh. but he is, well, he's, he seems to be honest and decent too. Yes, he does. Okay, when we come back, Tommy Lee Jones gets a couple of important career breaks as a country singer's husband and a murderer. This one's for me. This one's pretty cool. Continuing our special show on Tommy Lee Jones, the smartest tough guy in the movies today. The early 80s would see him move from playing a creep in marginal films to better roles in more substantial projects, like Coal Miner's Daughter from 1980, the Loretta Lynn story that would win Sissy Spacek an Oscar. Jones played her husband, Mooney, a simple country guy who felt threatened by her new independence. Baby, what I think I'm going to do is get me a job somewhere, driving a truck or being a mechanic or doing something that I, I'm good at. You're good at managing me. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Getting here's one thing and being here's another. My job's done, baby. I'll just get me another one. Two years later marked the first time Tommy Lee Jones really had to carry a substantial film on his own, and he won an Emmy for it. It was the terrific four-hour made-for-TV movie, The Executioner's Song with Jones playing Utah killer Gary Gilmore, a truly scary guy. Hey, can I help you? Yeah. Go inside. Give me all your money. In 
1987, with his career in a bit of a rut, Tommy Lee Jones took a break from playing serious roles, parroting his tough guy persona in a little scene gem called The Big Town. Co-starring Matt Dillon as a 50s hustler. Hope you're taking good care of my money. Yeah, well, if you hadn't stolen that 1600 from me, you might have had a chance to win all your money back. <laughs> Smart little stunt you pulled. Yeah, real dandy, Flash. You know that? Yeah, how come no one will play at your game anymore? I got a full house every Sunday night. Yeah? Playing with yourself is what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Don't push your luck, country boy. So in the mid-1980s, Tommy Lee Jones showed us what he could do, that he could carry a film. It would remain to be seen, however, whether he would develop as a leading player in Hollywood in feature films. And Roger, viewers who want to rent the Executioner's Song, I know you know this, they should get the European version. It was uncut, it's uncut version. It'll be yeah. on the box. That's the version that you and I saw in a movie theater screening yeah. room. It was shown in European, the, uh, in Europe theatrically. That's a terrific film. And you know, film. Gene, in terms of Tommy Lee Jones' career, the Executioner's Song is the film that's likely to get away. It was directed by Lawrence Schiller. It is right. a great American film. I agree with you. It was made for television. Yes. A lot of movie critics never saw it. Yes. It's never listed in a list of the great movies of the 1980s yeah. as if because it was on TV, somehow it's disqualified. Yeah. That is a landmark in his career, and it's a landmark in American film, it's too. A, it's a very strong film. We were lucky that we happened to see yeah. it. I don't it was, even know why we got to see that version. It, it was you know, a flu. It was the first made-for-TV movie we ever reviewed, and yes. we were snobs before that. Well, yes. it was made-for-TV. It couldn't be that good. And it was. It that is good. that good. Yeah. When we come back, Tommy Lee Jones puts himself on the Hollywood map as one of everyone's favorite villains. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. You know, in the movie critic business, we sometimes have a short little list we carry around in our minds of supporting actors who seem to guarantee there will be something good in any movie where they appear. Names like Harry Dean Stanton and M. Emmett Walsh appear on my list, and by the 1980s, so did Tommy Lee Jones. He didn't just walk on screen and go through the motions. Look at him here, for example, in a terrific film noir named Stormy Monday, set in Newcastle, England, and released in 1988. Now, this isn't the way we were used to seeing him. Here he's a slick international money man with an expensive wardrobe, but notice here how his suave and polished behavior suggests something sinister underneath. Katie, Katie, Katie. I don't have to tell you what kind of trouble you're in, do I? You're a smart girl. You can figure it out for yourself. What's-his-name is still singing soprano. <laughs> I kind of enjoyed that. And here's a key role in his career from 1989 as an ex-Texas Ranger in Lonesome Dove which remains one of the best television productions of all time. Just like with the Executioner's Song in 1982, it was a made-for-TV movie that introduced a new plateau in Jones's career. I'd like to see the herd that you and Jake could get. Herd of whores, maybe. Well, you ain't no more a cattleman than I am, Carl, and you know it, too. Don't want to do it, Gus. I want to see that country. Boy, huh? Bankers and lawyers all get it. Jones got an Emmy nomination for that performance, and later the same year he worked for the first time with director Andrew Davis as a Soviet mole inside the U.S. Army in the package. Who are you working for? Johnny, that information is privileged and confidential. I can tell you it pays very well. Who? Cool. Who pays you? Everybody pays me. Now, what's the secret of his effectiveness there? I don't think it's anything as simple as technique or even simple talent, although he has those. Those can explain success, but they don't explain the special relationship that some actors have with the camera. I think it's a certain irony that Jones brings to his roles, a sense that he's a smart man toying with those who only see what they want to see. Usually they see a down-home southern guy who likes to poke fun at himself, but we in the audience sense the snake coiled inside, the tiger poised to pounce, and we're fascinated by the way he lures his enemies to their destruction with that facade of ominous friendliness. In other words, he's playing the good old boy and the joke's on you yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I, think that, I think that that's very true. 
Um, he is smarter. His characters are smarter than the people than his adversaries realize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, just recently in the Fugitive, we finally get a group of people, his co-workers in the marshal's office, who realize that this is a very smart guy because most of the time the characters that are around him don't realize how quick and sharp he mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. It's a good, complicated. It's actor. An, you know, his whole career is kind of based on that in a way. I find it a an interesting autobiographical fact that he was Al Gore's roommate at Harvard for four years. I don't know where you can go with that except to say that obviously uh, he came out of a background that is a lot different from what he's projecting in the movies and maybe he's using that in some way. Coming up next we'll each pick our favorite Tommy Lee Jones role. Some more good video rental ideas coming up. Returning to this special edition of Siskel and Ebert, our challenge to each other, name your favorite Tommy Lee Jones performance. Now, normally I would select something unconventional, but I can't because I think he was just so good in The Fugitive that I can't ignore it, and I also want to see him get an Oscar nomination for it. He doesn't fail to make an interesting choice with every scene in this picture. Here's scrambling to track Harrison Ford's phone call into his police station. Jones is like a lion tamer and a traffic cop in this scene. Just focus, if you will, as you watch the scene. Just focus on him alone. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember, uh, well, it was noisy. I, I think you uh, said something like, um, you didn't kill your wife. Remember what you told me? I remember you were pointing my gun at me. You said, I don't care. He's on the south side. Yeah, Richard, that's right. I don't care. I'm not trying to solve a puzzle here. His energy level is unmatched, a perfect counterpoint to the brooding character played by Harrison Ford. No one could have done this role better than Tommy Lee Jones did. These two actors deserve each other, which is really a compliment to their to them both. If you think about it, you got you got Harrison Ford, who's stolid and moving across the film like this, and Jones is there uh, skyrockets. It's just great. You know, he does do terrific work in that movie, and I think The Fugitive is going to last. It's not just a good example of its type or a big thriller that's a hit this year. It's going to be around 20 and 50 years from now as one of the great action pictures of all time, and he's going to be remembered in it along with everyone else in it, I hope. My favorite performance, though, by Tommy Lee Jones is not in The Fugitive. It's the one he did on television back in 1982, mm -hmm. playing Gary Gilmore and Norman Mailer's The Executioner's Song. And I remember talking to Lawrence Schiller, the film's director, about the performance, and he told me that what he liked the most about the character Jones plays was his neediness. He is a man capable of killing in cold blood. He's a cruel, violent man, and yet we feel sorry for him, not because of any bleeding heart sentiment, but because he seems to have been so deeply wounded to have been damaged by life. Sometimes when we're um, making love, there's an old nightmare that comes back to me where I feel uh, like I'm in this closed up space. And there's that old, uh, terrible smell of oldness comes back, and I feel like I'm dead. To understand how good Tommy Lee Jones is in the Executioner's Song, you have to imagine the role being played by another actor, and that's hard for me to do. If he had played Gilmore as simply a bad guy, or simply a psychopath, or even simply as a victim, it would have made the whole story too easy. But he plays him as all three, violent, crazy, and sad, and also with a great deal of self-knowledge. At the end of the film, Jones' Gilmore says he wants to be executed. He should be. He deserves to be. And you agree with him, and yet you still feel sorry for him. So to get both of those responses yeah. is an example of great acting. Well, that's that big hurt somewhere that I was talking about. I would love to, I, I've never heard from Tommy Lee Jones, but I would love to know what it is in his background. Or if, he, if there isn't anything like that, then he's an even better actor <laughs> than we even think he is. He's very yeah. special. Coming up next, we'll preview the upcoming films of Tommy Lee Jones. This is Mom's eighth dog. She has the eight ugliest dogs in the United States. <laughs> What's ahead for Tommy Lee Jones? Well, he's working twice more with director Oliver Stone. In Heaven and Earth, he plays an American GI in Vietnam who marries a Vietnamese girl and brings her back to Texas where life is not easy. But in America, I was forced to fight once again. You told me two years. We are going to have one. No, 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 no. To make a home for my children and help my husband find his peace. In Stone's next movie, a 1994 release named Natural Born Killers, Jones plays a prison warden trying to contain a riot. 
Also on the way is Blue Sky, where Jones portrays a nuclear scientist whose unstable wife, played by Jessica Lange, is a threat to his work and family. Bridget Bardot strips for millions. She's a goddess. I sunbathe topless and I'm a scandal. You're not Bridget Bardot, remember? And in The Client, based on John Grisham's best-selling thriller, Jones is cast as a powerful prosecuting attorney. And the actor is now filming Blown Away, in which he stars as a master criminal, an ingenious bomber who terrorizes Boston. So all in all, wow. it's been a busy year for Tommy Lee Jones. If he gets this nomination uh, for The Fugitive, yeah. he's got five movies coming out to take advantage of. That means five groups of people that'll want him to get that nomination because it'll help create interest in their projects, but it will be deserved. This yes, is it will. an actor who is, we've seen, back, back to Love Story, 1970, we've seen a guy who's been around a long time and has survived the stereotyping of just a bad guy to being one of the most interesting and, presents in a movie And to today. only get better year after year. It's just terrific. That's it for this week. Hold it right there, Milo. Look out! He's got a weenie! Next week, we'll be back with reviews of some new movies, including Fatal Instinct, a thriller parody with Detective Armand Asante pursuing femme fatale Sean Young. Do you come here often? Only when I'm in heat. Until then, the balcony is closed. Fashion Bug, for the latest in junior, Mrs. Plus, even girls and men's fashions, 1,200 stores coast to coast, Fashion Bug fits your life. St. Ives Swiss Formula Collagen Elastin Lotion, made to work in the harsh Swiss Alps. St. Ives Swiss Formula relieves dry skin instantly, naturally. Easy Spirit Casuals, if we can make a pump as comfortable as a sneaker, imagine what we can do for casual shoes. It's America's favorite jelly bean, Jelly Belly. Now appearing at theaters and video stores with good taste, Jelly Belly Beans, try them, you'll love them.